Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. I am Evelyn of Pink Sheep Design, aka The Pink Sheep, and I am doing my Learn to Crochet with The Pink Sheep series. Um, for this series and for this video, you will need a size six, super bulky or super chunky, depending on where you live, the titles may be different, but super should be in the front. It is a size six yarn and a size 15 or 16 millimeter hook. If you purchase the Learn to Crochet kit in my Etsy shop, you have everything you need to follow along with these videos and learn these different crochet stitches and learn this wonderful craft of crochet. So in today's video, we're gonna be learning how to do a double crochet stitch. And um, we're gonna work a little swatch with this lovely gold yarn. Um, and we're gonna have some fun. So I'm gonna turn the video around uh, and we will get started. Oh, and if you like my videos, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you never miss a video because I have lots more tutorials to come. So let's get started. All right, we have got our size six bulky yarn and our size 16 millimeter crochet hook and we are ready to talk about um, double uh, double crochet stitches. Um, so if you've been watching my learn to crochet videos um, I have covered everything from how to create your chain to how to single crochet, half double crochet and this video will cover our double crochet. So I'm going to give myself a little slack with this beautiful gold yarn. Really love this color. It's just so nice. All right, so we're going to create our slip knot. I do go over this in my video about um, creating your chain. So if you need a little help making your slip knot or making this chain, you can check that video out. It's in the same playlist. Um, I learned to crochet playlist here on my channel. Um, all right, so we are going to chain 11. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, so I like to make my swatches ten stitches wide. Um, and anytime you're working with crochet and you're going straight across, um, you're going to want to chain one more than the desired amount of stitches in your uh, in your row. So if we want ten stitches, we are going to uh, chain 11. That is because we will be skipping this very first chain right next to the hook and we're actually going to be working into the second chain from the hook in most cases. Now this is different for double crochet. For double crochet usually you will find that it says to insert your hook into the third chain from the hook and that gives it enough space when you create your double crochet stitch where it's not going to be um, squished up in the corner. You want to have enough space to create that stitch. So for this particular video, we're actually going to do one more chain because I still want a row of 10 stitches, but instead of 11, I'm going to need 12 since I'm going to be skipping these first two in the chain. So I'm going to chain one more. So now I have this beautiful chain of 12. And instead of working into the second chain from the hook, like I did for single crochet and half double crochet, I'm going to work into the third chain. All right. So for a double crochet stitch, you're going to yarn over and insert your hook into that third space. I'm going to insert my hook. I'm going to pull that yarn back through this working yarn so that I have three loops on my hook. If you watched my half double crochet tutorial, this will look familiar, but this is where things are different. We are going to yarn over and we're only gonna pull our yarn through the first two loops on our hook, just like that. So now you're left with two more loops on your hook. So we're gonna yarn over again and we're gonna pull through those last two loops. That is your first double crochet stitch. And as you can see, let me take my hook out. The chain two that you created, well not the chain two, the two chain stitches that you skipped, those create that space so that this stitch is not all squished up in the corner. Um, it actually gets to kind of spread itself out and it's as tall as it's supposed to be. All right, so we're gonna continue to double crochet all the way across so that we will have 10 double crochet stitches across this um, swatch that we're gonna be making, all right? So I'm gonna yarn over again. I'm gonna insert my hook into this next chain space, pull up a third loop, yarn over again, 
and pull through only the first two loops on my hook, leaving me with two loops left over, yarn over again, and pull through those last two loops on my hook. All right, I'll talk a little bit about how I hold my yarn here, how I hold my yarn and my hook when I'm doing these, because um, these can get a little squirrely. Um, if your tension is off, it's easy for these to turn into kind of a big jumble of, of nothing if you're not sure how to maintain your tension here. So what I like to do is I usually kind of sandwich um, my hook and my yarn. So I'm holding my hook with a knife grip. This is called a knife grip. This would be a pencil grip, which is very different, um, but you can probably find some tutorials of people who use pencil grip. But I prefer the knife grip because it gives me the ability to hold my work with my thumb and my forefinger while I also have a hold of my hook. So I can yarn over here. I'm gonna work into that uh, third uh, space, okay, because we've already made two. I'm going to work the third stitch. So I yarn over. I'm going to insert my hook into that space. Um, I may decide to put my finger on top of this to keep it right where it is while I pull my yarn over my hook. Pull that through. And from here, I try to make sure that my my, my loops can move on my hook. They're not too uh, too loose, but they're also not too tight to where I can't easily kind of move them up and down on the shaft, the upper part of my hook. All right, from here, um, I also tend to kind of hold on to the, the loops that are on my hook back here, just lightly with my finger as I yarn over again. And then after I yarn over, these two fingers usually grip my work as I pull that yarn through. Oh, and that was a half double crochet. I only was supposed to pull through, there we go. So now I've got those last two loops yarn over again, holding on to the back, and then pulling my yarn through. All right, and that will get more natural with practice. Um, as you can see, because I was trying to explain how I held the hook, this one actually ended up a little larger than the other two. Um, and that can happen. As you continue to practice, you'll figure out what your natural tension and gauge feels like and what styles of holding your work work for you but I'm gonna go ahead and work the rest of these across, right? So I'm gonna yarn over, put my hook through that next chain space, draw up a third loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over again, and pull through the last two loops. Right, yarn over, inserting into that next chain space, drawing up that third loop, wrapping it around, pull through only the first two, and I like to use my fingers sometimes to make sure that those come off easily, wrapping around again, and pulling through the last two loops on your hook. So you can see those double crochets are starting to form nicely. Even though one was a little bigger, it wasn't big enough to throw off the look of the consistency of those stitches. All right, so we've got a couple more. I'm just gonna keep working these. Feel free to slow this down if you need to so you can get a better look or pause it. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops. Yarn over again, pull through the last two loops. Yarn over, insert your hook, draw up your third loop. Yarn over, pull through the first two. Yarn over, pull through the second two. All right, that is looking mighty fun, if I do say so myself. Yarn over, pull up your third loop. Yarn over again, pull through the second two loops. And if you purchased my Learn to Crochet kit, you should have everything you need to be following along with these videos. If you have not, you can check them out in my Etsy shop. I will put a link in the description. Um, you will receive a 16 millimeter hook and some super bulky yarn to make it easy for you to see your stitches um, and your projects will work up a lot faster, um, which is really nice, especially when you're learning. You don't want a project, that, project that's going to take you months to complete. All right, we have one space left in our chain before our knot and then our tail. Um, and you can always check, again, if you're concerned, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to put um, a stitch into this last space because sometimes, especially as you continue working along, um, it's easy to forget how many spaces 
um, or to see which stitches count. You can go back and count your stitches. We know that we wanted to have 10, so we can count here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We definitely need one more. All right, there is our finished first row of uh, double crochet stitches. And I hope that's focusing for you guys. There you go. All right, so I'm gonna do at least two more rows of this so you can see how it works up in a little bit of a swatch for you. So on all of the other um, tutorials I've done so far, we have started each row with a chain one. And if you remember, we actually uh, skipped two stitches on our chain before we placed the first one, all right? Before we placed that first double crochet, we um, worked into the third chain from our hook. So instead of starting with a chain one, we are going to start with a chain two. And that matches that idea of, okay, we skipped two chains from the hook, so we're gonna need two chains to start off the row. All right, so once I chain two, I'm gonna turn my work, All right? And you can see here, this is the side we're gonna be working into. And if you flip your yarn up, you'll see that nice row of Vs, just like you see with most of the crochet stitches, we will be working underneath both of those strands of yarn that make up that V, all right? So again, for double crochet, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into that first stitch space, pull up three loops, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the second two. All right, so you can see that nice edge that just formed here. All right, so this uh, chain two creates this nice strong edge here and then you were placed it, you placed your first double crochet stitch there. And we're gonna work double crochet stitches all the way across. Pull up my three loops, pull over through the first two loops, yarn over, pull through the second two loops. And again, making sure that you are working underneath both strands of yarn on that stitch. So after you yarn over and you insert your hook, you should actually have four loops on your hook at that point, or at least four pieces of yarn before you pull up that loop and have three on your hook. And then yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the second two. All right, you can see that nice pattern starting to form there. Again, this all comes with practice. Um, it may not look exactly like mine at first, and maybe it does. There are some people that tension comes very naturally. Um, there are other people that really have to just work on it, just have to practice in order to get their stitches to look nice and even um, and look the same size. But don't give up, because crocheting is awesome, <laughs> and it's a great skill to have, uh, and you can make so many cool things. Um, so don't give up, keep practicing. Three loops, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the second two. There we go. All right, and again, every now and then, if, you're, this, if this row of stitches looks a little larger, so maybe your tension changed between your first row and your second row because you're still learning, you may question whether or not you are supposed to work into this final stitch. This is more common when you're using smaller yarn and smaller hooks because it's harder to see each stitch. Um, but again, you always have the option to go back and count. You've got these, if I hold this up, you have these this V right here 
topped by these lines that create this first stitch. And this part is called the post. So this little V right here, that is called your post. You can count your posts. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or you can count your Vs. So if we come up here, we've got our first V, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so you know that if you're supposed to have 10 stitches in this row, that yes, you do indeed need to work into this final stitch, even if it looks a little different from the others because it is that corner row, uh, that corner stitch. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook, make sure I'm going underneath both of those strands of yarn, pull up my third loop, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the second two. All right. So we now have two rows of double crochet stitches. All right, if we flip it over, you can see how it may look a little different on each side. All right. So I'm gonna do one more row for you guys so you can watch. Hopefully I have enough yarn to make it through that. All right, so again, we are gonna start with two chain stitches. So I'm gonna chain one chain two, turn my work, and I'm going to work into each stitch across this row with double crochets. So yarn over, insert my hook into the first stitch of the row, draw up three loops, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the second two. All right, here we go yarn over and I go over this in most of my videos you have the option to let go of your work with this hand and actually physically yarn over with your hand here or if you want to maintain a grip on your uh, yarn you can actually make your hook do the work and you can just loop it around your hook and then insert your hook in and pull that yarn back through totally up to you play around with it see what you like better um, I tend to go back and forth. Um, sometimes I will make my hook do the work. Sometimes I will release my work. Uh, it kind of just depends on uh, what I'm working on and um, how comfortable I feel with my tension if I want to allow myself to let go of my work because sometimes holding on to my work allows me to keep everything in place and feel like I've got uh, a little more control uh, over my tension and my yarn. All right, so for these last few, I'm gonna actually let go of my work and yarn over so you guys can see what that looks like. And you can see that when I do that, I immediately go back to holding my yarn. So I'm gonna let go, yarn over, reach down and grab my work with my forefinger and my thumb, then insert my hook pull up the loop, let go to yarn over, grab my, my work again, pull through, let go, yarn over, grab my work, and pull through. And sometimes I'll grab actually on these stitches, not below. Again, it's just up to you, whatever makes you feel comfortable and like you have a little more control over your project and your, your work. Last stitch. And again, I'm also maintaining my hand, my, my finger back here on these stitches. That usually helps me uh, stay a little bit more in control as well. All right, so we have this beautiful little swatch of three rows of double crochet stitches. Um, it's a great stitch. Uh, it usually works up really fast uh, because of that width of the stitch or the height of the stitch. Um, so let's say you decided to keep going with this swatch just straight up 10 rows across. You'd have a beautiful uh, scarf. Um, so that's a super, super simple project. If you just keep doing that over and over again, you could add some tassels on the end here and um, you've got yourself a project. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, be sure to check out the rest of my Learn to Crochet videos on my YouTube channel in the Learn to Crochet playlist. Um, you can also check out my Learn to Crochet kit where you will get a hook 
um, and some yarn that you can use to follow along. Um, I've also got some other kits in my shop if you want to make a scarf or a hat or something like that. Be sure to check that out. But be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you like my videos um, so that you don't miss any of my new ones. And um, until next time, uh, thank you so much for joining in and happy hooking.